operate. We have to have a vision that doesn't require me to eat today. I'm willing to forego eating at least one meal, and I, can deserve, I, I deserve to forego at least one meal, in order to build something that's long-lasting for future generations. Is there anybody here who can understand what I'm saying? Yeah, very important. I'm grateful that there's so many of you that can hear me. And I hope that over time, those who didn't say yes, you'll convert them. If we can change the way we're thinking about approaching our development, our country, we will lead not just Africa, but the entire world. I promise you that. The last thing I'm going to say is this. The first black partner at Goldman Sachs, his name was Garland Wood. He's also now late, unfortunately. And I met Garland Wood, pretty, I think, the first year that I was at Goldman Sachs. And Garland being the first black man to be a partner at this Wall Street firm, I don't know if you can appreciate how much history that involved, what it must have taken, how brilliant he must have been. It's so hard to get ahead in, on Wall Street, certainly back 25, 30 years ago, almost impossible. They used to sell slaves on Wall Street as much as they would think about hiring a black person. And I'm not joking when I say that. So the history of that institution called Wall Street is a very specific institution. They care about making money. They don't really care about anything other than that. And uh, they've had to change their ways. And if you notice, even if you read the newspaper, you'll see Wall Street has had problems recently again because it was doing short-term greedy versus long-term greedy. Anyway, Garland Wood, when I met him, I asked him, sir, you're the first black partner at Goldman Sachs. One day I'd like to be the first black woman partner at Goldman Sachs. Can you give me some words of wisdom? And he took a moment and he said to me, you're on a tightrope. Do you all know what a tightrope is? Do we use tightropes in Ghana? Somehow, yeah, tightrope. Some people know how to walk on tightropes. They can... They have core strength, they have balance, agility, and they can walk from point A to point B. So he says, you're on a tightrope. There are all these firecrackers going off underneath the rope. Your job is to stay on the rope. And then he goes back to eating his dinner. And I thought to myself, what does this mean? It's a parable or something. I've asked this man, he's the first man in history to become a partner at Goldman Sachs, meaning he's worth tens of millions of dollars. I say, give me words of wisdom. He says, I'm on a tightrope, firecrackers, stay on the rope. I told my mother this story, and I told her that it took me 15 years to understand what Garland Wood was talking about when he's talking about firecrackers. You have a destination in mind. You're just about to graduate. You have these big dreams, and there are going to be some things coming at you for some people as soon as you walk out that gate. You maybe even before you get out the gate, you may get a text that something, somebody's gotten sick or something. There's some wahala somewhere. Okay? Somebody's holding their hand in testimony. You should expect that's going to be, that's going to happen. And not as it's going to happen. It's going to happen with more frequency the bigger the game you're trying to play. So if you're playing a small game, you'll have small problems. If you're trying to create a university, you're going to have big problems. It's not easy to do it. That's why so few people have managed to do it. If there are 25 million Ghanaians, how many private universities are there? 10, 20, 30? Very hard to do. It takes a certain somebody who's going to literally fight through every single obstacle for 10 years, everything from funding to teachers to facilities to everything, so that you all can graduate. There's not enough money in the world to do that. You do it because it comes from your spirit. What you choose to do with your life is you should choose that thing you have passion for so that no matter what comes against you, and there will be a lot, you will be able to persevere. And there's so many examples in Ghana of entrepreneurs beyond the ones that are here in this group right now, in the media. I did some work for multimedia. I helped them raise $20 million in the last 60 days or so entrepreneurs who persevered, who literally, I mean, if you all know the struggle, I think one day I have to write. This speech has made me think seriously about writing. I should write down formally, beyond my speech, what it takes to build a multi-billion dollar company or a hundred million dollar company. What does it take in Africa today? I just want you to know that each of you has exactly what it takes, but you got to use the tools. You have every tool, but you got to use them. And you got to use them every day. And there'll be somebody trying to tell you, take a shortcut. And you're going to have to say, no, I want to do it the long way because I want it to be sustained. It's only a certain kind of person who has enough confidence to take the proper route, to do things properly. 
So I want to encourage each of you, when you walk out this door, when you choose your path, choose the highest and best path you can. Be bold. Whatever your dream is, triple it. Do it times 10. Many of us dream too small. Whatever I've been able to do in 30 years, you should be able to do now in three. I've just told you all my secrets. Okay? So I'm, I'm encouraging you to really go forth and change not only your life, your family's life, your community life, but the shape of this nation, and we need you more than ever. You all will determine whether Ghana is the great, remains a great country or whether it shifts. We've seen other great countries that have shifted, both in Africa and abroad, even in Europe. Some people made bad decisions, now their children are bearing the consequences of the decisions. You all are now going to be in the professional ranks. What decisions are you going to make? What choices are you going to make? What is going to guide you? Where do you stand? When in doubt, go back to the AUCC core principles. They'll guide you well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Adu, for your stimulating and encouraging words. You have given us a lot to think about. And your words will guide and, of course, give our graduates a better feel of the real world. We thank you so much.